Hello everybody, for today's project we're going to be upgrading our 3rd gen Toyota 4Runner to a mirror that has a compass and temperature displays right here. Um, these mirrors are made by Delphi and they existed in GM products, Toyota, Lexus, all kinds of manufacturers use this product. This particular one I took out of a Tahoe or Suburban, forget which one. We're talking mid 2000s. Uh, same applies for the Lexus and Toyotas that it came in. I found them in Tundras as well. Um, it is a Delphi part, it's very universal. The Toyota wiring had a lot less wires coming out, but they were all black. We're only going to need four wires out of this bundle a power, a ground, and a sensor. So all you have to get is the mirror with the wiring. This sensor is up front behind the grill in front of the condenser. And I just snipped the wires on that. And I also took the bracket. I did this mod on my 4Runner. I put this sensor behind the headlight which causes it to read about 150,000 degrees when it's 40 degrees out when you're driving slow. It doesn't have enough airflow. So it's pretty critical that you mount it in front of the radiator where there's constant airflow. So all we're going to have to do is solder these two wires into these wires and run a power and a ground. We're going to run it off of a fuse tap, and the thing will work. So on the GM plug, there's seven wires. We're only concerned with four. This pink wire is power. This black wire is ground. We have a green and white wire and a black and white wire. These are for the sensor. The wiring on the sensor itself is identical, black and white and green and white. So these are going to connect to that and pink and black are going to connect to power. Okay so I've gone ahead I've just twisted these together for demonstrations purpose green to green black to black and then I'm just going to use my 12 volt battery here to give it power. So we give it voltage You can see it's coming on. It's reading our direction and our temperature. So real easy swap. Pretty much applies to any vehicle you want to put this into. For the wire, you need four wire. Uh, this is 16, 18 gauge trailer wire. And it's about 14 bucks for 25 feet. So it's pretty cheap comes four wires put together so it'll work fine for what we want to do with it okay so we're gonna go ahead and get these wires get a little solder added to them We'll do the same for the mirror wiring, we'll just get a little solder added to these. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get these soldered up. I went ahead and added some heat shrink tubing here to slide over once they're soldered. I'm going to go the black ground wire to white because usually in automotive white is your ground and pink I'm going to go to the brown wire then I'll go green to green and the black and white I'll just put to yellow. It really doesn't matter what color you pick as long as in the end 
the connections are to the right wire. Go ahead and get this one soldered up. Okay, this is a very handy little tool. Um, it's a very expensive little tool. It's about seventy or eighty dollars. You can get a third hand from Harbor Freight for a few bucks. It'll do the same thing. It just makes soldering a little bit easier when you're doing it by yourself. Alright, so now we're just going to slide these heat shrinks on. And we'll get these shrunken down. You can use a lighter for this or a heat gun. Harbor Freight sells a cheap one that's pretty effective. I have a rework station here with a heat gun, so we'll just use this gun. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and just tape up maybe about 10 inches of this. I'm going to shoot to keep it flat. I like the way that looks better than the round wires when it comes to going behind the mirror and up into the headliner. When you're doing with your electrical tape, get a good tight wrap, and then for the remainder, wrap it loose, and that'll prevent it from peeling back as easy. Okay. I did also deep pin the wires I don't need anymore. You just have to take something small and pointy, push down from the top of the silver tabs, and the wires will pull out from the back. Okay, so the main reason we're gonna change out this mirror is this is our third forerunner, third gen. They're always floppy. Have yet to have one that doesn't flop around. So to remove the mirror, we have to take off this lens cover screw behind it. So there's a couple little notches here. You just get a small screwdriver behind it. It'll pop loose like that. Phillips head. See a single screw up here. Unscrew that. This will pull towards the back and down, and that pops that out. You can just swing this out of the way. And there's three screws to take off the mirror. that a pull that comes off and then this here you just catch these hooks back in these holes push it back into place and put the screw back in
lens cover, push it in from the rear first, and then just push right there and it snaps back into place. Okay, so we're gonna place this mirror a little lower than the factory mirror because it is about one and three quarter inches longer than the factory mirror. So it does potentially, depending on where you have it, get in the way of the mirror fl or the visor flipping all the way forward. So I deal with it because I like having this mirror, but it could bother some. So all I'm gonna do is going off the center line of this, get it roughly where I want it in the center of the truck and height wise I'm going a little bit kind of the bottom of this with the visors you can always this has two adjustment points so you can actually move it up or down and then I'm just going to take some of this tape that I stuck on the windshield kind of get behind it and try to place it where the top of the mirror mount is so we're shooting for about here i want to say check that okay so that's about where i want it height wise and then i'm just going to put this kind of on the side just to give me a rough idea of where i need to glue the mount something like that when you get this mirror from the junkyard the plastic right here holds the compass and it's very brittle from sitting in the Sun for the last 20 plus years so just take a flathead screwdriver this portion is pop metal stick it in here pop it it'll pull a piece of the glass off to clean that off I just smash it with a hammer until the glass was gone and then I scraped off the glue layer so it's ready to be reapplied and for this to get this loose there's a t20 torx right there just loosen that up a bit and this piece will slide out and it slides a little bit and it'll pop out which allows us to do this mirror swap without touching the compass plastic everyone I've touched on here you touch it it breaks so try not to horse on this too hard or you'll probably break it and then to go back in just goes in here it'll slide up and you use the set screw to lock it in place so to clean the glass we're just going to use some rubbing alcohol on a paper towel just get, make sure there's no grease anything to prevent it from sticking squeaky clean for the glue I'm just going to use some Gorilla 5 minute epoxy they sell kits at like your auto parts store to reapply your mirror basically comes with epoxy and if you don't have the mount if you don't get the mount from the junkyard they sell a kit that has one that will work so this is just one to one. You don't really need much. I like to mix it just with a Q-tip. And I like to use foil just so I can wrap it up and throw it away when I'm done. All right, so we're just gonna take some of the epoxy, apply it to the bracket. And this we're gonna put up to the glass and I know from the top of the plastic of the mirror to the top of this is about a quarter inch so I'm gonna set this about a quarter inch low and put it right up here stick it and then just use some of this tape to hold it in place while the epoxy cures I mentioned before there's so much adjustability 
in these mirrors. It could be a little bit off. You're probably still going to be okay to get it placed exactly where you want it. I'm just going to go like that so it'll hold it. It's five minute epoxy. It takes a few hours actually before it'll hold the weight, but it works just fine. Okay, so to run the wires, I like to get the wires behind here and the visor to help hold them from slipping out the front. This thing's got a little water in, so it's got a little bit of water damage warping, so it doesn't hold the wires very well. So again, one screw here, this pops off. And then we can run the wires behind it through here through here. So we're going to take this off. It's a Phillips head. And you just kind of got to pull on it a bit. And we'll also take off the visor. take off this handle to run it down the A pillar. These just pop out and these screws can be incredibly tight if they've never been out before. We'll see how these ones go. They've never been out. I'm gonna get an impact driver. All right, we got the impact driver. Hopefully make this a little easier. Okay. And this piece here just snaps in. Kinda just gotta get your fingers behind it. Start pulling it out. leave enough where I'm confident I'll be able to get the mirror plugged in so maybe five or six inches we're gonna tuck this in here try to get it behind here again so that it won't fall out and keep it pretty flat and then back here you get behind the visor hole like that Okay, so we have enough to plug in the mirror. And this will stay there once the console goes back on. And then we can go ahead and put the visor and these clips back on. Okay, so we're gonna fish this wire through the A-pillar into the dash. Just make sure it's semi-straight. Just run it down towards the fuse panel right there. it through. And then what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take some small zip ties and zip tie it to the factory wiring loom. Just to keep it out of the way. And I 
recommend using flush cuts because zip ties will cut you if you don't cut them flush. So we'll go ahead and we'll get these all zip tied down all the way and then we'll work on starting to make some connections. Okay to finish running the wires out through the engine bay we're going to go ahead and take out this kick panel and this sill plate just four screws. Just get your hand under there pull up it'll pop right out and then the kick panel you just have to get a hold of it and pull it towards the back of the truck and it'll slide loose just like that okay so I'm just splitting the loom the green and the yellow is what we're running for our sensor so that's going to go up in the engine bay the brown and the white is going to be our power and our ground so I'm just gonna pull this all the way up until the fuse box area just right Okay, to right about there we'll be fine. Now the, the power and the ground wire I'm going to cut right about here. Uh, the goal is to use this screw that holds the kick panel on as our ground. So just a little longer than what we need should be fine. All right, now we'll go ahead and separate the white and the brown wire to the same point to about there. Okay, for powering it we're just going to use a fuse tap. You can pick these up on Amazon fairly cheap. I'll try to put a link in the description. And we'll just strip this back. We're going to shorten up the brown power wire just a little bit just so it's not a cluster in there. And we'll just use a shrink connector, shrink foot connector. shrink this down. Okay, just like that. And we'll go ahead and get this plugged in and I'll take the camera and get a little tighter shot of it in there. All right, here's that fuse tap just put into the accessory location on the fuse block. So before the ground, we're just going to use this eyelet with shrink connector. Shrink it. And then we're going to go ahead and ground it out right here on this clip. Now all we have to do is run our wire to our sensor and get it mounted in the grill. All right, to run this through to the to the engine bay, um, I just ran a piece of TIG welding rod through the hole that the hood release cable runs through. So I just put a hook on the end, push it between the two wires like that. Get the wires kind of in the middle and then I just pinch this on top of it and try to get that end so it won't grab too much. 
and then I'll just gently pull it through with the assistance of my wife. So I'll get that done and we'll get back to the engine bay side. Alright, so we have it coming out of the firewall right here next to the hood cable and just put some 3 8 wire conduit. Run it down along the fender behind the overflow bottle. And then out that hole right there. I'm going to take out the grill. We're going to run it this way along the AC line for the condenser. And we're going to mount the sensor up here in the center column for the hood latch. Okay, I've decided I'm going to mount the sensor right up here on this bracket. So to make it fit a little better, I'm going to cut off this tab. I'm going to drill a small hole down here for this to lock into. And then I'm going to put a nutsert up here to take an M6 bolt to hold it in place. Alright, I've gone ahead and uh, put a nutsert in here with an M6 bolt to hold it. And then i got these soldered in. So this is all wrapped up, got them wire tied through there. So we'll go ahead and move to the interior and show you how it works. Okay, we have everything wrapped up. All that's left is to plug in the mirror. And hang it on the hanger, like that. And then a T20 to tighten up that screw. It's been maybe two or three hours since I glued that on there and it feels like it's on there pretty good. And then now we'll just turn it on and check the function. Okay, north, 88 degrees out. I don't know if it's showing in the video. This is a auto darkening mirror and it's so bright out here that it has caused the mirror to go a little bit darker. But that's about it. All in, maybe $40. It was about $20 for the mirror and the sensor at the junkyard. About $15 at Walmart for the wires. Um, the fuse taps a couple bucks on Amazon. And the conduit is about 4 or $5. So maybe about $40. And... It's a fun little upgrade. So thanks for watching. Appreciate it.